Hello everybody, Andrea Majewski here with Dental L Mobile Hygiene. I'm going to talk to you guys today about the coronavirus and how we should be preparing for getting back to work, hopefully sooner rather than later in the safest way possible. But I wanna talk about mobile dental hygiene specifically because you've probably been taking courses, watching webinars, and there's a lot of talk about dental offices returning back to work and dental practices, but there's no talk yet about mobile. So this course is basically, I'm taking bits and pieces from those many, many courses that I've been taking for how to prepare for back to work for a dental practice and kind of inserting my own opinion of how that might change a bit if you are a mobile dentist or a mobile dental hygienist. Um, but first, let me just say, please excuse the mess behind me. You guys can see the, the little puppy there. Um, we have construction happening and she's terrified of these noises so having her be close to me locked away in my office seems to help so I apologize for the mess behind me and for the puppy that you guys are all going to have to look at now so try not to get too distracted. <laughs> okay so continuing on. So yes you guys so if you are a mobile hygienist or even if you are an independent um, dental hygienist or a mobile dentist our I guess way of working is a little bit different because even if you are an independent dental hygienist who has her own practice, his or her own practice, you will definitely be following the guidelines of dental practices opening up. But it might be a little bit different for you where you might not have been seeing like 30 patients, you know, every day. Or if you have a dentist working in your same practice, you might have three other hygienists working. Well, that's like a dental practice. But as an independent dental hygienist, if you're the only one working, you might be seeing four patients a, um, a day. You might be seeing eight patients a day, um, but that's it, not like eight times five. But things still need to change meaning you will still have to have patients, um, what they're talking about is having patients wait in the car and then bringing patients in one by one, um, taking their temperature. They're actually saying to take their temperature before they step into the building, but they don't know if that's absolutely necessary yet, but at least taking their temperature in the waiting room area as they should be the only person there at that time. If they have a high temperature, then they have to leave. Um, basically asking them questions like, do you have any symptoms? Have you been sick? Um, but patients or people might not be totally honest with you, which is why taking that temperature is extremely helpful because that's just one more thing to help ensure that hopefully they don't have the coronavirus because as we know, it doesn't always show symptoms right away. And they're saying that those that don't show symptoms, they actually have it worse than anybody else. And it can get a lot worse because it's, it's basically staying down deep in there, but then it just can't wait to come out basically. So that's why we have to do all of those things. Seeing one patient obviously at a time, but the key is that they are saying that those spatter, those aerosols, they remain in that air for up to three hours. In some um, resources that I have been looking at, they are recommending um, seeing one patient every two and a half hours, but I don't know why it says two and a half if a lot of the, um, the resources, actually all of them say that it can remain in the air up to three. So it really should be seeing one patient every three hours. For myself, as an example, as a um, hygienist, when I see patients in my home practice, I would usually only see patients once every three hours anyway, simply because I would be taking a break in between that time. I would be doing other things. That's just what I liked about having my own practice. I would never see a patient back to back. That's just sort of how I liked to do things. I would probably see three patients a day, that's it, but that's what I liked to do. As a mobile dental hygienist, that timing is still perfect because it would take me about two hours per appointment in one home. Um, an hour per, per appointment, um, an hour and 15 minutes maybe, but you have to take into account 20 minutes to set everything up, 20 minutes to tear everything down. So two hours is actually perfect, but I'm just in that one home anyway. So technically, if anybody's exposed, 
they're all going to be exposed and I'm going to be exposed too. So I'll talk about mobile dental afterwards because um, that will definitely change things, right? But I'm um, talking back again in a dental office. So they are also saying that you want to have the patient rinse with a pre-procedural rinse first. Now I made a, a little note here. Um, Listerine whitening as an example, so Listerine whitening mouthwash has 1.5% hydrogen peroxide. That is good enough because a lot of people have been asking me, well, what mouth rinse can I give them? Like, what's the best one? Listerine whitening is fine. Go order it now before it sells out, <laughs> just so you do have it. But a little side note is, so what that does is that does actually help to limit any of the virus that is in there, if it is, because you know, if you're rinsing that in the mouth, um, um, you know, spatter, aerosols, it's just um, um, helping to limit that, even if there are spatters and aerosols that will happen. But the thing is, as soon as that patient takes a breath again, well, the Listerine whitening isn't working. So it's a very short-term solution. I just think we are just trying everything to, to you know, like everything that we possibly can, but my opinion is it's not really doing much anyway, but I'm still going to use it because as soon as that patient takes a breath, you would basically, you should be having them rinse again, but that's impossible. So just a little side note for you there. Um, and of course, if the patient is saying they have any symptoms, like even if they're not sure, like, oh, well, I've been sick, I think it's, it's allergies, you know, I feel this like tightness here, or, you know, I can't breathe properly for some reason, you know, all of that, they cannot come. But same thing for those who work in the practice, such as yourself, such as your, your staff perhaps. If they have any symptoms or they're not sure, they might be saying, oh, I think I just have really bad allergies, but I have all the symptoms, but I think it's just allergies. Stay home, they have to stay home, it's that simple. For staff, they should have their temperature taken every day to make sure that they don't possibly have it and then they're exposing other people because this is why dental offices were shut down because the aerosols the spatter we don't want to be constantly exposing other people so we need to be very very safe we need to be very very careful um, some other things to mention is i just kind of left myself some notes here so i took a little look-see um, some other things to mention is your uniform your scrub top, scrub pants is not considered as protecting you. So you need to wear your scrub top, scrub pants, but that um, you need to have like a lab coat, long sleeves, everything over top. They can be disposable or they can be reusable, but they're saying there needs to be a new one for every single patient. So think about this. If you're working in a dental practice and the dentist is is doing checks. When they're doing a procedure on their patient, but then they have to go check three other hygiene patients, they need to be changing that lab coat or changing their disposable gown after every new patient. Are they really going to do that? Let's just think about that for a second, but that's what they should be doing. As a mobile hygienist, just to put it in there, that's easy for me. You know, I can have a new lab coat with long sleeves for every single house that I go to. Easy, no problem, but something to think about. What they're also saying is for your clothes underneath your lab coat. They need to not be worn outside the office. They need to stay in the office and laundered there. Meaning you would wear your regular clothes into the office, take them off, change into your clean, uniform and then put um, a gown or a, um, um, a lab coat over top of that. So for mobile, I, we, whoever's doing mobile needs to be changing every single time. So you might be, be wondering, okay, do we change before we get in the house? Do we change after we get in the house? What do we do? Change in the car? So the best way to do it is when you're in the patient's house, you want to change. So you want to change in their home, you know? So say, you know, you have to change into your uniform, lab coat, in their bathroom, whatever, right? And then before you leave, um, actually, see, that's a good question. So when you're leaving, 
you don't want to change into new uniform um, in their house when you're leaving to go see somebody else because then you're technically you could be contaminated so what do you do do you do you walk out with your dirty um, scrubs and lab coat and then get into your car which could be dirty no so what I think is going to happen and, and what they're going to suggest I have to sneeze sorry guys no nope, never mind of course because everybody's watching me so I'm not gonna sneeze um, so what I think they are going to want you to do is to go into the bathroom change out of your dirty um, uniform lab coat put on just regular clothes and then that's how you would walk out and then of course if you're going to another patient's home when you get into their home use the washroom and change into a new set of uniforms and lab coats so does that make sense so that's for mobile specifically um, I did mention this in a couple other videos this hasn't changed but they're saying of course to wear a mask um, a shield wear a hairnet um, now those N95 masks are very hard to come by right now. There was another one that they suggested. Oh darn, did I not do, um, I think it's called K95. Please don't quote me, but I believe it's K95. That's a Chinese, um, version of the N95 mask, but it's not FDA approved except for in emergency situations right now. So any other time you would not be able to use it. But for emergency situations such as now, you can because N95 masks are hard to come by. They still suggest having a level three mask over top. Now, those N95 masks need to be tested for proper fit. Those K95 masks need to be tested for proper fit. Um, that's what they're saying. But there aren't enough people to go around to test. So what do you do? So the courses that I've been attending, they are saying that you can wear an N95 mask or a K95, K94, shoot, sorry guys, I can't remember the name of that, that other mask. If you know it, please comment below. Um, and a level three mask over top. They are saying that is okay. And of course, your shield, because we have to do something, right? Having that said, when you're going to go back to practice, if you don't have what you need, you cannot be opening. Meaning if you're saying, oh, well, we don't have enough of the face shields to go around. Too bad, you cannot open then. Um, if all of your staff is having allergies or they feel sick, too bad, you can't open then. They need to stay home. If you don't have enough lab coats with long sleeves covering everything, too bad, you cannot open again. So just because when they tell us we can open, in some areas in the States, you already can, but here in Canada, we can't yet, um, at least not in my area, they're changing things every day. But just because they say you can open doesn't mean you should if you don't have all the proper PPE. So please keep that in mind. Another thing to mention you guys for your operatories, things can't be left out now we have to put everything behind closed cabinets things need to be as sparse as possible because we need to disinfect the heck out of everything afterwards as we would have anyway but now just more than than ever because so far they are saying that the covid virus could stick to surfaces they don't know a lot of these things for a fact it's just it could so just to be safe right so keep that in mind so you guys talking about mobile again so think about it this way oh sorry a quick note air filtration systems they they want us to have those in the operatory plus they want us to have like purifiers attached to our high volume suction line so that it just sort of takes away all of that spatter aerosols as quickly as possible. But I did mention all of those in another video anyway. But now talking about mobile quickly. So everything that I just said. So you might be wondering, well, why didn't you just talk about the mobile first? Well, because you would have to know the background info of dental practices first, right? So then you have to think, okay, how does that relate to mobile? So basically what you guys should be thinking about is before you see your patients, they should be taking their temperature at home. I say this because you don't wanna go there and take their 
their temperature. It could be you are going there an hour away, you know, who knows, right? You don't, you don't want to be unloading all of your stuff into their living room and then saying, okay, it's time to take your temperature now. And then they have a high temperature, you can't see them. So then you have to lug everything back in. You have to get changed again. Have them take their temperature at home. So what I plan to do is to have them take their temperature at home. If for some reason they don't have a thermometer, too bad. I can't see them because I don't want to risk that. Or I might think about saying, okay, well, there will be a $25 deposit. Um, if for some reason I get to your house and you do have a high temperature, um, you won't be getting that $25 deposit back. That is my travel time. That is that time that I could have seen another patient, you know, so I'm still kind of thinking of these things a little bit, but you would think that everybody has a thermometer in their house now, right? I don't know. Actually, having that said, I didn't, I didn't have one, so but I don't have kids. <laughs> um, so that's what I suggest. And then what I'm going to do before I even get changed, lug in everything, I am going to ask them to actually come outside for me to take their temperature outside because it doesn't make sense for me to get into their house. I take their, their temperature and potentially I'm being exposed to all of these aerosols um, if they do potentially have COVID, because I, I, I have to protect myself too, because if I get sick, well, I can't see patients. I'm not helping them, you know, basically. Or if I get sick and don't show symptoms, might not have a fever, um, okay, well, I, I could be infecting patients, right? But of course, that's where the PPE comes in, everybody. This is why we have to be as protected as possible, because sometimes we just don't know. Another thing that I want everybody to consider is to change up your consent forms. Um, have something in there that basically says, um, this is not the best wording at the moment, but, but something that basically says that if you get sick after your appointment today, if your dental hygienist gets sick after the appointment today, nobody's going to be held liable. I can't sue them. They can't sue me. You know, have something in there like that. Of course, use different wordings. I suggest um, talking to your clinical insurance company because a lot of these insurance companies, they won't cover you if you have to close because you get sick or if your patient gets sick. But a lot of them too, it's the other way around. They will only cover you if you get sick or if the patient gets sick, it doesn't matter why the office was shut down, but there has to be a valid reason. So something to consider. Um, don't be using, they're saying that they don't want us to use the polisher, the Cavitron, high-speed hand pieces, things like that. So for mobile hygiene, our compressor unit, everything is condensed, right? Into this like 60 pound compressor. Don't even put the saliva ejector on. Actually, no, I, I, um, I changed that. Use the saliva ejector and the high volume suction. Hopefully you have the high volume suction attached to your compressor unit. If you do not, you will likely have to buy another one. Thankfully, I thought ahead and I had purchased one with the high volume attachment with it, um, plus hand pieces too, but I have been a restorative hygienist for about six years, so I can do a little bit of both. Um, so definitely I suggest using the high volume suction and the saliva ejector with that. Um, obviously you only have two hands. So I would like attach the saliva ejector like on the side of their mouth here and then use the high volume and your other hand with the instruments. It's going to be not so easy, but that's what we have to do right now. Unless you have some sort of attachment, which they might make mandatory, that attaches to the high volume to really suck in any aerosols, any spatter that might happen. But for dental hygiene procedures, as long as you're not using the Cavitron, you're not using the polish in your hand scaling, think about it. Yes, of course, there's going to probably be some spatter and some aerosols, but definitely not as much as if you are using the Cavitron and the high speed and the polisher, right? So we need to minimize this as much as possible. Not forever, but that's what they're saying. Um, what else, you guys? Did I forget anything? So mobile will be different. Like the air filtration systems that they're talking about, I don't know if they're going to want us to lug one into every home we we go to. Personally, I don't think so just because the purpose of those air fil uh, filtration systems is to kind of suck in and to purify, right? 
the air for multiple people. If you're going to one patient's house, even if there's multiple people in that home, well, they would all be exposed anyway if they had it. So bringing in the air filt filtration system, well, yes, it might be better for you, but it's not really doing anything for them. I think it's more for offices where there's multiple patients, multiple people, multiple staff, where you do want to do everything that you possibly can. So that might be something a bit different. And talking about mobile, more people I think now than ever are going to want to have people come to their home, opposed to them going out and being exposed to 80 different people for one appointment, because they will be touching things. They will, they will be opening up doors. They might be using the washroom. They might be exposed to other people, right? But if you are going into their home, they're not exposed to anybody. You are but you also aren't exposed to 80 different people that day. You are exposed to that one patient or those two patients, that's it. I feel safer doing mobile and patients probably will too. So you guys, I hope this helped. There will likely be some more video updates as more things come about. It is May the 5th today, so I'm sure there will be more. So stay strong, be safe you guys, and let's think positive. Um, let's just hope things get back to normal sooner rather than later, but we can do this. We are here for our patients. So let me know if you guys have any comments. I would love to hear them and I will talk to you guys very, very soon.